Hello, I'm Paul Lambus and welcome to our fifth episode of Culture Scope, featured on Cypress Mail's interactive web portal, Good Living. Our location for this episode is Ayakiriaki Church and Banayakrisopolidisa, built in the 13th century over the ruins of the largest early Byzantine basilica on the island. Ayakiriaki Church was built around 1500 AD as a Latin church on the site of a smaller church which was destroyed in 59 AD by an earthquake. A hundred years after its construction and following the Turkish invasion of 1570, it became the Byzantine Cathedral of Gatopafos. Mosaics covered the entire basilica floor, yet there are only a few mosaics still preserved throughout today's ancient ruins. Within the compound is St. Paul's Pillar, where according to tradition, St. Paul was scourged for preaching Christianity. It was here where Roman proconsul at the time, Sergius Paulus, later converted to Christianity, becoming the first Christian ruler and Cyprus the first Christian country. Within the courtyard of these ancient ruins and the Ahia Kiriaki church, there's a sign that marks the spot where Eric Edgegod, king of Denmark, died in 1103, while visiting Cyprus on his way to the Holy Land. Today the Ahia Kiriaki church is used jointly by the Anglican and Catholic communities. This magnificent archaeological site is a lovely area to explore. It's open seven days a week and entrance is free. Tonya Buxton has been immersed in food from a young age, from the forced apprenticeship in her mum's kitchen where she started to understand the power of good food. She went on to develop a modern healthy European cuisine and cooked in a gourmet chalet in France. But her real love for Greek, Cypriot and Mediterranean food has rightfully earned her the title as the face of Greek food and culture. Tanya, you are a celebrity cook, a television presenter and a food writer, best known for your highly successful shows My Greek Kitchen and My Cypriot Kitchen. When did you realize this is it, food is my passion, particularly Greek Cypriot cuisine? This is quite a complex question to answer because I tripped into food. Being a Greek Cypriot girl in the UK, I could cook. I mean, that was, that was the rule, you know, you, you can clean a house from top to bottom and you can cook. These are things that you can do and you can make a good Greek coffee, that's, that's, that's the heritage. Whereas most British girls, most English girls, I mean honestly they couldn't do a cheese on toast. So I was cooking from a very young age, I was cooking for my friends as well from a young age. So I always could cook and I always loved television. I loved presenting, I loved television, I loved travel and I liked informative, entertaining television. So you're watching something, it, you're enjoying watching it but actually also learning something from it. And so I tried lots of different angles to do it. And what I did realize is that no one really was doing a program about Greek food, or Cypriot food in particular, because everyone was doing Italy, France, Asia. There was loads of things like that going on, but there was not a single show at that time. The first series was out 15 years ago on Greece or Cyprus. And so I was determined that this should happen. So that's how the food element came in, but really I wanted to show off Greece and I wanted to show off the particular Cyprus my home because nothing had been done about it. In my Greek kitchen and my Cypriot kitchen, which was a 27 minute show, only about 10 minutes of it was food. Cooking, actual cooking. The rest was the story of the ingredient or the story of why you're cooking it and that's the bit I love most of all. Do you think the gastronomy game in Cyprus needs to be upped so as to increase its global appeal? Unfortunately, we Cypriots, we're not proud of our product. We've got to really realize what amazing things we have. For high phenolic olive oil, you have to have over 250 milligrams per liter for it to be high phenolic olive oil globally. In Cyprus, we have one called Atsas, which is four thousand milligrams per, per litre. It is a wonder food. It will get rid of eczema, it will help your heart, it will aid your digestion, it's, it's, it, it, it helps with pain. It's, it's a wonder food that we produce in Cyprus. And the same with halloumi. I mean, I'm going to get into a lot of trouble here, but halloumi is made of goat's cheese. That's the ancient recipe, comes from the goat's cheese. 
that roam the mountains. Now there are some with sheep on the flatter land where there wasn't mountains, they would have sheep and it would then be made of sheep, but the original one is just goats. So you can understand it's sheep or goat's milk, but now this addition of cow's milk in order to produce volume, and sometimes purely cow's milk, which is not what Hulung is about, and it shouldn't be something that we promote. We should be promoting the purer, better products and set them at a premium like the Italians do. I mean, if you think about it, the Italians are fantastic at taking their products, branding it, and not letting anybody touch that recipe or do anything with it, so we can learn from them. What advice would you give home chefs who are inspired by your style of cookery? I tell you the difference between me and a chef, and I have this, I have this great argument, when I'm work, especially when I'm cooking on television with, with um, chefs from restaurants, or, you know, uh, like I work on a show called uh, Sunday Brunch, and the chef there, Simon, he's very chefy. And, and I say the difference between you and me, Simon, is that you spend hours making one plate of food with a this and a that and you take it forward and you want the whole room to clap for you. The difference between you as a chef and me as a home cook is that I slave, I cook for a whole family every day and no one's clapping for me but I serve good food every day and that's the difference. The real heroes of food are the mums at home cooking for their families. Not you, chefy boy, with your little thing, clap, clap, clap. So we have, I have these great arguments with chefs about you know, the different ethos of food. Um, I'm, my food is rustic, very rarely is that pretty, but it tastes good and it you know, feeds you. Do you know what I always say about uh, cooks is you should find a recipe that you like, especially if you're a bit nervous to cook, and follow it to, by the book and repeat it. And then once you've done that, change it to what you like. So for me, I'm obsessed with cinnamon. I put cinnamon in everything. I love it, it's just my favorite spice. But you might not like that. So if you're gonna make, I don't know, my, I don't know, even Dog Mothers, I put cinnamon in, or my Chateauvieux have cinnamon in them. If you don't like cinnamon, take it out and put what you like in. So I think the thing to do when you're a home cook is to follow a recipe so you, you see the end result and the product and you see how it works and then change it to flavours that you and your family like. You know, I'm not crazy about dill, but I've got friends who love dill, so they'll put it in everything, but they'll follow my recipe just to get the steps formed, and then they'll take out the parsley, they'll take out the coriander, they'll stick dill in, and I love that. I love the fact that people change things to make it their own, because every family has their own way of doing things and their own taste that they love. Tanya, you're also an anti-aging expert, writing and giving talks on how to stay young, both internally and externally. What's your secret to staying vibrant and relevant and fighting to keep aging at bay? What you put into your body and also what you think, they're two really big things. And I remember kind of when I hit 40, 45, started doing this thing where every time I sat down, I'd go, oh, make these old lady noises. Oh, I thought, oh God, that is one thing that's got to stop because that is the most aging thing you can do is make all person noises. So that's got to go out the window. And I also always try to think of being young, what it, what it feels like to be young, not let my mind go into an old time set. I completely refuse to say I'm old now, so I can't do that. I, I refuse to, to do that. I will endeavour to do whatever I did when I was 20 and 30. I've decided I'm not going to get old. Actually, I'm going to, you know, get younger in my mind, get even more, I don't know, inappropriate. Because <laughs> you can get away with it when you're older. For me, Cyprus is home. And even though I'm British born, when I get on a plane and I come to Cyprus, it's like coming home. And it's that feeling of coming home. That's why I love Cyprus so much. And I got asked by a very snooty chef what, was, what would be my dying meal. And he was horrified when I told him that I would do a slice of toast with khalumi on top, and on top of that, honey and a sprinkle of mastihi. That would be my meal I have before I die, because I love it. Dubbed the secret weapon of Cypriot sport, Luison Loizu is a professional heavyweight boxer based in Nicosia. Proudly fighting in the colours of the Cypriot flag, this talented fighter is quickly becoming a popular icon due to his professional ranking here in Cyprus.
Luisson, as an undefeated professional boxer with a 100% knockout ratio, you've become a popular icon representing Cyprus on the local and international fronts. How did you get into the sport? All my life I trained myself. It's now 35 years. I do the same job, mix martial art, karate, judo, boxing, kickboxing. I work so, with MMA, I will fight in Greece, a different country in Europe, and so in Africa. I start from RDC Congo. Then from there, I find my way to find to go in Holland, many countries from Europe. Then I finish my career and the title of world champion. I prefer to go into boxing. This is boxing something clean. You need to work more your brain, technique. Uh, you need to be good, a clean boxer, a professional. You need to give everything a focus to be fighter. Some fighters become fighters because they love to fight. Other fighters are fighters. He is a fighter by nature. And when things really get tough, that's what separates the very good fighters from good fighters. My dream is not to be number one, it's to be the best. But it uh, is to push myself to be better. His dedication is beyond normal. His commitment is beyond normal. His fitness levels for a fighter of his age is beyond normal. He's never out of weight. He's never unfit. He's always in condition. There's no sustained break that he takes where he loses any conditioning or anything with his body. His commitment is a thousand percent when it comes to the sport. You've been helping young fighters get closer to their dreams. What are the benefits of doing a combat sport? I can say now it's my 20 year in the Cyprus. I have a gym, I teach people. Uh, I need to show the people that Boxing is a sport. Boxing is lovely. It's sometimes I like. If you have something in your brain, you put, you focus, that you do, yeah, you can't get that you want. It's only here in your heart and your brain. It's easy. Without the boxing, I don't have life. Burgers have become serious business lately as new joints and restaurants beckon hungry crowds to their doors. Located in the old town of Nicosia, the burger shop has become a household name amongst locals, renowned for their drool-worthy delights. Ektoras, what separates burger shop from the competition? Καταρχάς το μέρκες σου φέρνει καλή σπίδα, σκρέας από το εξωτερικό. Έρχεται το Ιρλανδέζικο κρέας, μπαίνει στο μαχαζίν, μπαίνει αγάπη μας όταν έρχεται στο μαχαζίν. Και όταν τελειώσει και ευκύπωξε και με την αγάπη του σεφ, γιατί μπαίνουν too many loves in the burger, φτιάχνει έναν τέλειο μπαν για τον πελάτη. Έρχεται το κρέας, καθαρίζεται εδώ, πετάσουμε το 25% για να μπορεί να είναι το κρέας καθαρό, να το γευτεί ο πελάτης ok. Γίνεται και εμάς και την ώρα που το θέλει ο πελάτης, ψήνεται στην πλάκα και έρχεται φρέσκο στο τραπέζι. Your sleek burger venue offers heaps of options on the menu, made with 100% black Angus ground beef. However, you also have chicken and vegetarian options. We can choose all the tastes, because there are from the Dina Godopoula, pork, salads. We can choose a different kind of food that each person wants to eat. There is also a vegetarian option and a vegan option. There are two options for vegetarian and vegan. We try to have the right price for the customer. Εγώ έτσι θεωρώ καλό το κουαλίτι μου. Δηλαδή, φαΐ, ευχαριστία και προχωρούμε μαζί. Ο άνθρωπος να νοκεί να έρθει να φάει και να πει απόλαυσα το φαΐ που έφασε τον Μπέρκερ Σιόπ, αξίζει τον Μπέρκερ Σιόπ.
A short drive away from the bustling capital of the island will take you to Cyprus's first church constructed in the Russian style that has promptly become a landmark for the Russian Orthodox individuals residing on the island. Dedicated to St. Andrew and the All Saints of the Russian Church, this magnificent structure is an impressive sight, while its surrounding premises offer an enjoyable day out for the whole family. Built by Russian businessman Vyatislav Zarakov and designed by Andreas and Mukhtaris Architects, the church opened to the wider public in 2017 and aspires to serve the spiritual needs of the Russian Orthodox residing on the island. Located in the village of Episcopio, the church offers a magical journey into the world of religion and grandeur. The walking path leading to the entrance of the church features sculptures and mosaics of a number of saints, while the beautifully painted interior depicts scenes from Russian ecclesiastical history. Weighing 12 tons, the five golden domes were brought to Cyprus in containers from St. Petersburg and were later assembled by special technicians. Another world is born on the church grounds. There is an on-site shop and elaborately crafted kiosks that offer spiritual relaxation, while the landscape park features a well-equipped playground for children, a picnic area for family outings, as well as a pavilion and reception area. Open seven days a week, the church is open to the public and is wheelchair accessible. Born in Athens, Greece, Petra Terzi is a multi-award winning film director and founder of the Cyprus International Film Festival. As a co-founder of the Women in Film and Television in Cyprus, a platform that facilitates networking among women professionals, Petra seeks to illuminate rising stars, artists and film directors through her endeavours. Petra, you're a film director and the founder of the Cyprus International Film Festival. Although you've studied business administration and life coaching, when did your passion for film become a profession? I first had uh, the desire to become a film director at the age of 14. I forgot that and I worked at the business industry at the cultural event management for 15 years. After being involved in the film festival world as a festival organizer, I remembered my passion and I got professional training in film direction, actors direction and film production at film school Acme in Greece and also received the Master of Arts in Digital Video Production at the Naples University in Paris. Your current documentary, She Should Run, explores in depth the recent history of Cyprus and it of course touches on subjects such as human rights and uh, gender equality. What was the main objective behind this extraordinary film? I'm very proud of this film as I believe that our democracy will benefit from the world perspectives and experiences that women bring to leadership. And with this movie, I wish to inspire more women to decide to run for an office in their communities and people to vote for women. Is there a personal motto that motivates you and inspires you to be your best self? If you are good, they watch you. If you are great, they copy you. So I do my best to inspire creativity in people to copy me. And the second motto is, uh, every ending is a new beginning. And I would like to invite all women in Cyprus who are in the um, uh, art industry, not only film industry, maybe television, maybe music, because we bring in Cyprus a very big organization, women in film and television, 
and uh, all these women in Cyprus will be connected with this uh, organization. We would like to have a, um, a convention here, so many women all over the world, producers, uh, decision-making women in the film industry will be here. So it's good uh, secret women to, to attend and join our uh, organization, Cyprus Women in Film and Television. Stay connected and follow us on social media. If you want to be featured on CultureScope, contact our production team on the email provided below. Until next time, stay safe and let culture transform your life.